This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Morning everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke. Thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it. Excuse the buzzing. We've just rocked up. So because the lights are on, the door's open. We've just rocked up to uh, Swindon PTI. We've got to get loaded of toilets. We're going to Lapland today. Excuse the mess in the back. I'm in the process of putting up my light board. I'll talk about that in a bit. Anyway, we're just pulled up now. We need to go and get loaded. So, um, yes, let's go and do that. Right, uh, yeah, we are being loaded. Um, it's one of those situations where they put one on, we've got to move forward. So um, they can put the other one on. So we just stayed in the truck, otherwise I've got to keep jumping in and out and taking my boots on and off. It's very annoying. But uh, yeah, so, back here. This morning, I've already put this on. Now, this is um, it's bolted on using the existing bolts. It's like, I don't know what this is. It's like a, not a shower curtain. I went to Wix's and just bought it. It was about two meters long it was. I've cut it in half. Actually, I cut it at exactly 100 and, I say exactly, <laughs> I can't even remember. These bolts are exactly 118 centimeters apart. I measured that. And then I just put a little bit of extra on the, uh, on the end just to be safe, covered up with some tape, which actually now looks a bit tacky. And I also had to hammer these in a little bit um, outside hammer the ends just so that the bolt was long enough then to go on in so now that's up that is a bar going across the, the um, headboard no holes in the headboard whatsoever which means we can have this on which is the wrong way around so double-sided tape I'm hoping we'll just hold it up hopefully up there and it should hopefully then look a little bit like that fingers crossed we'll, uh, we'll have to see but we've got to move forward again now I was, I was hoping you were going to say when he's just driven off. Never mind. Um, so yes, we've got cameras, uh, GoPro set up, so we will be vlogging later on today as well. And uh, as I briefly said, this is going to Lapland, UK. So um, on my camera, that looks and it. So yeah, we've been there a few times. It'll be good to go there again. Don't know what we're doing after that. Right, everything is on. We are just strapping up now. We've got six units on, which is lovely. Sweet, final one going on now. Right, we are loaded. We just need to go spin round. Hopefully we can do that in here. Radio can go down. Right, so there's the load, don't know if you can see it. Lovely, 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 lovely. Yes, so it was actually um, Kieran that loaded me, the boss's son. Is my seat on warm? It is. Put that on cool mode. Let's get round here. Sweet! <laughs> Say goodbye. Right, so we're off to Lapland, uh, UK. Been there a few times, um, like in consecutive years. I think this might be the third year, I think, consecutively. Maybe fourth. Can't remember. We've been there a few times. Um, it's a really nice place, actually. I'd like to take 
my kids, but I think they're getting to the age now and they're a little bit too old for it. I don't know, they're like eight and ten. The oldest don't really believe in it anymore, I don't think. But uh, yeah, never mind. So yeah, we're on our way to Lapland UK. And then from uh, Lapland UK, which is in Ascot basically, we've got to go straight to Gravesend. So if you watched my last video, you would, no would have noticed or seen that we didn't quite make the collection in Gravesend on Friday. Um, today's Monday, uh, we're gonna go do it today. So we're gonna go get this tipped off in Ascot, go get the Gravesend load, get that loaded and then um, drive back to the yard. It's a delivery for Bristol, but it'll be done in the morning. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today and for this video. And then I think he said tomorrow, do that Bristol run, and then I've got to go to Shepton Mallet, get loaded with something, and then that's going to Southampton or something. So yeah, got the next couple of days work lined up, ready to go. That sun is bright. Let's go around here. Lovely, jubbly, brilliant. Right, anyway, I'm going to crack on. I will see you once we get to uh, Lapland UK. Hopefully we're not there too long because we want to get on really and get this um, Gravesend loaded and then head back to the yard because, yeah, it's a good three hour drive back from there. So we do ideally want to be loaded as soon as possible so we can have a relatively decent finish. But I suspect we'll probably be looking at, I don't know, uh, uh, realistically, probably five six so it's not too bad at the moment i wanted to go down there i've taken the wrong turn <laughs> i've taken the, i'm so thinking about um <laughs> what time i'm gonna finish and i uh, didn't take the right turn so we're gonna go all the way around <laughs> the roundabout it's a good lesson that if you ever miss your turn don't just cut in last minute just go round. go around the roundabout it isn't gonna cost you too much extra time here we go Left here, that M4. That's where we want to go. <laughs> I'm not using the sat nav. I'm just getting there on my own, on my own feet. <laughs> anyway, I will see you a little bit later. See you in a bit. Okay, you join me on Bracknell Road A322, and we are uh, just around the corner, pretty much. Got just over a mile to go until we are there. Now. Um, the last time I went to Lapland UK, I came from the other direction, so it was on my right-hand turn, which is actually a preferred way of turning into the site, but a lot more traffic. So I decided to go this way, it's quicker. Um, we do have a little bit of a time issue today. We want to go to Gravesend yet, still and get loaded. Um, like I said in the previous video, we didn't have a time. I'm hoping we are a couple of hours ahead of schedule. Not ahead of schedule, a couple of hours ahead of what we would have been on Friday, so Friday we wouldn't have got there until like quarter five, but the ETA there was four o'clock originally. I'm hoping we can get there for two o'clock today, but that very much depends on how quickly we are at Lat Lamphor. Hopefully um, we can get tipped. If we're in and out within an hour, I'm hoping we can be at Gravesend by two o'clock, but um, we'll have to see on that one. Uh, but yeah, no, last time we come here, I ended up turning right from the road. This time we're going to turn left. Uh, and I always get confused where the entrance is, because there's like what looks like a main entrance into the place. And then it's not that one, it's the one after. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got to, got to look out for that entrance. And then we'll speak to someone on the gate. I'm pretty sure we've got to go left or something, turn around and come back on ourselves to go into the waiting area. I think that's what he said last time. We'll see whether it's still the same. Yeah, the, uh, there's a train track up ahead. We go over this first, and then it should be on the left. Well, it is on the left. I know it is. Go over this bridge. Thank you very much. Is this a sign here saying Lapland? Lapland deliveries, yes it is. We shall get on the other side of the road.
Lovely, lovely. Uh, I have been here, yeah, last two years, yeah. Down the bottom boneyard. So you go around here, before you go down the dip and up the hill, there's yep. that area on the left. Right. You'll see a little port loo on the corner. Go down there, they'll bring a bloke with a port lift down to get them off. So before it goes back up, stop before there. Before it goes up, you'll see there's a, an area to the left of the road. Yeah, cool. All right, mate. You can't miss it. Go on. We'll oh, see, we'll see. You really can't. There'll be other vehicles in there. There's a port loo in the corner. Right, you can't miss it. All right, see you in a bit. Uh, I hope it don't, because normally we stop in that boneyard over there. Just trying to think. Okay, yeah, because this is the dip going back up. So let's just down. Um, yeah, there's another place down there, isn't there, I think. Uh, unless it's this bit. <laughs> he was saying I can't get lost, but I am lost. Because he said toilet, and I, I see that toilet there. Unless he means this one, I'll um, I'll just call my guy. He know where he wants me. Cause they're there, look. So I'll just call my guy. Well, hello, Luke. Hello, mate. You're at Labland. Oh, MED, mate. Yeah, I'm here now. I'll just parked next to the van. At the top. Okay, perfect. I'll be down in it with a lifting device. If Sweet. You care to unstrap, sir? Yeah, no worries. So you want me to just park up here, yeah? Yeah, park up down there. I'll drop more down there. Brilliant. All right, mate. No worries. All right. Thanks, Jim. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, so it is here that they want to tip me. So I will just budge over to one side so they've got plenty of room to offload them. So I'm just trying to think where to park. I don't know where they want to put them. That's the thing. I don't know, if they, if they want to put them down this area, then they might want me over there. Or if they put them, I don't know, they just... I can't imagine them putting them here, actually, because the road comes down here, look, so... We'll just park here. And uh, they can offload it and then sort of figure out where they want to put it. We will stay here. Right, let's go get them unstrapped. The Essential New Truckers Handbook is a book aimed at new drivers who want to become part of the industry. This book will guide you through what to expect in the industry via its 28 chapters and will help you understand important rules and regulations such as driver's hours, loading and unloading, manoeuvring and much more. This book also contains DVSA revision theory test questions and is a great read should you wish to gain some extra knowledge. The Essential New Truckers Handbook, updated and enlarged, available now. Link is in the description down below. Oh, it's a train. I was wondering what that noise was. <laughs> uh, never mind. Anyway, here she is. Here's the truck. She's absolutely bloody filthy right now. Just probably close the door. She looks clean here. Not so clean here. Look at this. This was spotless when I left the yard this morning. Absolutely spotless. It was all looking like this. But the roads I took to Tetbury this morning made it filthy yeah oh yeah i can't remember if i said so um yeah so i can't remember if i said so this morning i went to tetbury first thing and then turns out he forgot to change the jobs over i had to do this and um so i went to, i went to tetbury for no reason basically and then um that's how the truck got dirty never mind So yeah, we're just going to uh, take all these straps off. 
Like I said, there's six of them to do. Lovely jubbly. Good old trusty uh, winder. You can hear the forklift. He's here ready for me. Right, they're coming off now. Honestly, it's annoying me that the truck is dirty. But, uh, but yeah, we're coming off. And he's going to put them over here, he said. Oh, the train honking is on. Number two coming off. Honk it there in a second. Four more to go. Number four. Oh, no, number three. I need to learn to count. That's four left. Number three, three left. We only had six. <laughs> Decided to uh, to come down here, and get a different view. Also, there's a toilet here, so I'm going to go and have a quick wee. <laughs> okay, number four. Very jubbly. I need a wee. Can't wait for you. Nice. It smells a bit in there, but never mind. That's what toilets are, isn't it? So yeah, uh, I've been told that this is effectively day one of the build, like there's nothing in here yet. Just a few contractors uh, sort of starting to get everything ready. But yeah, this this just gets filled with Christmassy sort of stuff and you get huts put in, snow gets put on them, everything, the lot. Um, honestly, it just looks very, very nice. It's all lit up. They put lights under the trees, lights on top. It's all lit up, you can see, it looks amazing. Definitely recommend uh, you check it out. It's called Lapland UK. We were speaking to a couple of mates about it earlier and they didn't know anything about it, which I took as a bit of a surprise, to be honest, but never mind. Anyway, one more left to come off and then we can go. There we go. That's the last one. That'll be put over there with the rest. The other ones that we brought over. We can now crack on and go to our next place. I'm hoping we can get there before two. We'll find out once we get in the truck. Get in the sat nav and see what it says. Ugh. Right, we're done. Phil's giving us the thumbs up. Seatbelt on. Engine on. Steering wheel adjusted. For some reason, the stereo doesn't turn on, on automatically at the moment. Don't know why. No idea why. Anyway, sat nav says one o'clock would be there for, so that's good. Shall I say bye? I'm pretty sure we go out the way we come in. I didn't want you to change gear then. Lovely. Yeah, so it wasn't too bad. Um, got them off pretty quickly. Like I said, we're going to head straight to Gravesend now. I think this video is going to be quite a short one. Uh, things are going well. But I've just said that. Now things are going to go bad. I can see it happening. Uh, well, yeah, we're about an hour and a half away from Gravesend, which is a lot closer than what I thought it was going to be. Um, and ETA is one o'clock. So um, yeah, that's actually, it's actually pretty decent, to be honest with you. Um, if we can get loaded quickly, we could be back by like, before five maybe. We'll see, I'm not that bothered if we are or not. Like, I think as long as I'm back by six-ish, that's pretty decent, I would say. Anything before that's a bonus. Ooh, trees. Let's get out of here. 
Clear to the left, clear to the right, clear to the left, clear to the right. Lovely. So yeah, lovely. And it's nice to see Phil as well. Phil, um, like I said, I've known him for a few years now because we've done this work for like three or four years. It's got to be three years, I think. Yeah, because I've been at Arian since so just over three years. So I've known Phil for just over three years. This, that, that would mean that this is the third time that I've been here <coughs> in a row in each year. Phil's a really nice bloke. Nice to have a little conversation with Phil, definitely. Um, so yeah, all good, all good, baby. We're gonna head to Gravesend. We've got to get loaded with remix pallets. Um, normally there's like 20 pallets, if that. So it shouldn't take too long. Is anything coming down? We need both lanes to make this. Yeah, so that van is turning right, but you can't go until I go. I can go now. Lovely. Uh, I know I keep saying this, but it's actually, honestly, really wound me up that my truck is so dirty already. This truck was spotless Friday when I left it. And it was spotless this morning when I arrived as well. And I spoke to Kieran earlier, and Kieran said that he's, he washed all the trucks over the weekend. But he said he didn't wash mine because mine was already clean, which I'm like, clean truck yes <laughs> but going to Tetbury this morning it just made it absolutely bloody minging and it is actually winding me up because I can't really clean it now with a cloth because I'm going to scratch it it needs to be jet washed <sighs> it's just like proper gritty stuff that's on it it's really wound me up honestly it has I don't think it would but it really has I need to find a truck wash or something just a jet wash and just spray it off oh so annoying anyway I'm going to crack on to Gravesend. I will see you in about an hour and a half's time. See you in a bit. Okay, before we continue on with the video, I just want to talk to you about the new TomTom Go Expert Plus, obviously by TomTom. It's a new device, which is an upgraded version of the TomTom Go Expert, hence the Plus. Now this one has some very cool features on it that the predecessor didn't have, uh, and I'm going to run through a couple of them with you right now. Now, one of the new features they've added on the TomTom Go Expert is the addition to the low emission zone. So if I go into the right section, so if I go routine, where's routine? Is it here? Settings, routine, there we go. If we go into routine and select avoid and scroll down, you'll see low emission zones. Now, low emission zones is basically the invisible zone around London. If you go inside it and you're not compliant with the emission zones, you get a big hefty fine. Luckily, I'm in a Euro 6 truck, which means I am compliant. But if you're in an older vehicle, you would select that and then it would uh, basically not allow you to go into said low emission zone. Also, you can turn on visual cues on your TomTom. -tom. So if you need to go left at a roundabout or straight over, your TomTom -tom will clearly tell you you need to do so. Now, if you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, which is where you're watching this video, then you may or may not have seen a 60 second short video, they call it, they call it shorts, where I've explained a different feature on each platform. They are my favorite features on the TomTom, -tom, and I'm gonna run through them with you right now here in, in one video. Okay, so the first feature I wanna to talk to you about is the fact that you can change your vehicle dimensions. Now, obviously, as a HTV driver, it's very, very important that we go on the roads that are suitable for us. So we can enter our length, our width, our height, we can put our maximum speed in, axle weights, all of that good stuff. And that just ensures that then we can go down roads that we know that we are suitable to go down and we don't do anything silly like hitting a bridge or going down a road that's too narrow so we can get stuck. So the fact that you can change that as a dedicated HTV sat nav is, is the best feature that the this sat nav I believe can offer. It's not my favorite feature, I'll get to that in a minute. Another feature is multi-dropping. So I do sometimes do multi-drops. I'm just gonna select a random location that I've got up here. So Truckfest Peterborough, go there every now and then. We're gonna tell the sat nav that we wanna go to Truckfest Peterborough. It's gonna calculate three different routes for us. There's one, there's two, and then it'll calculate a third one as well. We'll take the first one because it's the quickest. Also, it's the most direct, so that's the one we're gonna take. But if we're doing multi-dropping, deliveries then we may want to go somewhere else first so we we may want to go up to Birmingham first for example parking Long Street the somewhere that I parked for in the past so now rather than go diagonally up it's going to take me up and across but obviously you can add as many as you want so say we want to go here as well so this is H&H &H Pollington we can add that as a stop as well 
and then it's going to calculate a new route. So it's going to go up to Birmingham, up to Pollington, and then down to there. However, we might decide that that isn't actually the way we want to go. So we go down to reorder stops. Once we get to here, we can then say, look, so we've got that stop, we've got that drop, and then that's where we finish it. We might decide, actually, we want to go there first, then we want to go up, then we want to go down. Then it will automatically calculate the route based on the, the, uh, the stops that you want to go to first. Another cool feature is if you go into sound and then select voice control, you can uh, choose your own wake up phase. Now I've put subscribe to Luke. So if I go back to the main menu, I can now say something like, subscribe to Luke. I'm listening. Go to work. Finding a route to work. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, yeah, you can have any phrase you want uh, within reason, I, I believe. It's got to be a certain amount of characters. Uh, but yeah, you can choose whatever you want. I, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. And a bit of a gimmick. <laughs> Subscribe to Luke. Now, my favourite feature. Now, it's not a big feature, but it's my favourite. So, if we just put... Um, so, we just say, like, go back to the yard again. Go to work. Go to drive. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to calculate a route. We're not that bothered because what we want to look at is the colour. The line is yellow and also all of this is yellow as well. But we can change this if we want to by going into appearance. Now if we go across to, where is it going to be? Uh, map and display. There we go. And then... You will arrive at your destination at 1314. Theme colour and route colour. So theme colour, we can pick any of these colours. There's, there's loads. So we can go to like purple. That's now going to make those, um, the things that popped up here is now going to be purple instead of, instead of yellow, like they were. And if we go to uh, root colour, obviously it was yellow. We can now change that to something else. What should we go for? Let's go for, let's go for lucky lime. And there we go. The root colour has now changed to green. Now it's very simple. I know, but I like that. It's a bit of customization, makes it more personal. And I like that. I like that a lot. Kind of looks, kind of gives like Joker themes, doesn't it, for Batman? Green and purple. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, that's the TomTom Tom Go Expert Plus. Um, if you're interested in buying one, click the link that's in the description down below. Thank you to TomTom Tom for sending me one out. It's been great. It's been amazing. And I look forward to using it more in the future. But the uh, the newest thing that they want us to talk about is the ULEZ. So it's the ultra low emission zones that you can... Uh, Say that you're a Euro 5, Euro 6, so then you can obviously not go in if you don't want to go in, basically. But yeah, buy one if you want. Links in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching. Onwards with the video. Just got to walk up these steps. There's the truck. Minging. Okay, here we go. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 16, and then one on the front. 17. 17 pallets on. We're good to go. Let's jump back in the truck. Right, we're done. Turn the engine on. Someone said I should um, fold this away nicely, like Jenko. <laughs> there we go, fold it away nicely. Ugh. Oh, God's sake. Did that on the last video as well, didn't I? <clears throat> yeah, I keep knocking this with my hand when I take my top off. I'm going to break it if I'm not careful. Let's not break it. You on? We're on. Okay, suspension reset, phone can go up there. Steering wheel down. Seat belt on. Get out of the bumpy roads. Can't wait. Mm. Yeah, so once we get out of all these bumpy roads, we can put our foot down. Very bumpy, very bumpy. And dirty and dusty. Never mind. Yeah, so ETA to Yard is um, it's actually half past four. Um, I'm on one hour 37 minutes of driving and it's two hours 41 minutes away. 
I I might need a half an hour break on the way back. Or, if traffic is kind to me, I may make it back without needing a break. In which case, we we'll be back in the yard for half past four. But if we need to stop for a break, we'll be talking five o'clock. Which is, you know, it's actually pretty decent, really. Do, do, do. Straight over this roundabout. We're taking up both lanes because I've got messed up on this next roundabout coming up before. I get in the left lane. I actually need to be in the right lane because you want to go straight over the first one and then right over the second. I think the last time I come down here, I got in the left lane, as you would expect to be in, to go straight over. And then um, got caught out on the next roundabout. So I want to be in the right-hand side lane for this, so I can go right at this roundabout. Because I think, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I think both lanes go straight over. And of course. I was just in the wrong lane. I was in the left-hand side lane to turn right. And I know some people will be like, oh, of course you've got to be in the right-hand side lane to go right. It's not always the case. A lot of roundabouts, you can go all the way around in the left lane. Like, the one I use daily on the A419, for example, far left lane goes all the way around. And there's many, many, many examples that I can't think of right now. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, um, we'll head back uh, towards the yard now. And like I said, we're on an hour and 50, so... Two three it gives me two forty, and we're two thirty away. So there's ten minutes in it as to whether or not I need to have half an hour break. So we might need to stop. We might not. Um, if we have to stop, then we will. We've got there's plenty of opportunities nearby. Probably stop at Membury area. I would have thought if we if we get get held up. So and then by the time we by the time we're at Membury, we're only twenty minutes away from the yard. So uh, if I've got twenty minutes of drive time left or more, then I carry on. If I haven't, then I can stop, so we'll probably do that. But we'll, uh, we'll assess the situation when we get closer. So I'll see you in a little while. See you in a bit. Okay, you join me on the M4. We're just about to come off to go to Swindon. I'm gonna show you what I said earlier about the three lanes that go all the way around to the right. I'm not even joking. I sometimes get anxiety over this very roundabout we're about to use because all three lanes go right to the A419, all three lanes. However, lane two, essentially, always cuts into lane one, every time. And um, not just car drivers, but truck drivers as well. And uh, yeah, we sometimes get beeped at, so I thought, I thought I'd show you. I thought I'd show you what it does, if we can make the likes, that is. We, um, might actually be okay because we've got no one behind us so yeah so we're in lane one and we're staying in lane one yeah so that's fine because there's no cars next to us but up ahead there was a black car that did cut into this lane i don't know if you would have seen it on the camera so all that for nothing <laughs> but this roundabout honestly is a nightmare because the vehicles in lane two cars, motorcyclists, lorries, buses, whatever, tend to cut over into lane one, which is uh, obviously the lane that I am in. So yeah, it's a little bit uh, a little bit frustrating that they do that, but never mind. I was hoping to show you on camera, but that isn't the case. <laughs> but yeah, no, we are back in Swindon now. We're not too far away from the yard. We are nine minutes away. We're on four hours and five minutes of driving. So we've got 25 minutes of drive time left and we only need like 10 or so to get back, so we're good. That lorry was very close to losing his mirror. It was well in my line. So yeah, we're good. We managed to get back um, just in time. Now, I don't know why, but it feels really early, like, it it feels like I've not put much of a shift in, and I know that sounds strange. I think it's because it's 4.36, my ETA, 20 to five, and then by the time I park up, you know, it's gonna be like quarter to five. But because it says 4.45, I think that's like, in my head, I'm just thinking, yeah, it's quite an early finish. But by the time I do that, walk to the car, drive home, it's gonna be like half past five, so it's not actually that early of a finish. 
but I don't know why, but in my head it just, fe- it just feels like an early finish. It's been, like I, said, like I said earlier, it's been an incredibly easy day today. Went to Tetbury, went to Swindon, got loaded at Swindon, eight straps over, no, sorry, six straps over. Went over to Dart- um, Dartford, basically, Gravesend, and then we've only got 17 pallets. I think there's only eight straps on this as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just a very simple day today. Not really much effort it's just been driving mostly I've, I've like I've done nearly seven and a half hours worth of driving but yeah in terms of physical work it just doesn't seem like much then it's really weird really weird but yeah that's going to be the end of today's video I'm rambling on big time there <laughs> so thank you very much for watching I like I said I don't know how long this video is going to be because it feels like it's been an incredibly short day so I feel like the video might be short as well but I genuinely I don't know, I ain't got, <laughs> got no idea. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, if not, then you know, tell me why you didn't enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, then tell me why you did. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I am trying to get to 75,000 subscribers. Once I hit 75,000 subscribers, it's then the road to 100,000. We have to be three quarters of the way, and uh, we're just need another 25,000 to get 100,000 subscribers. And I can't wait to get 100,000 subscribers. And my, my, my girls can't wait, my daughters can't wait until I get 100,000 subscribers because then I get a YouTube subscriber plaque and they're of, the, they're of the age now where they love YouTube, they know all about these plaques and they know how many subscribers i got and they, yeah, basically they want to say my daddy's got a YouTube subscriber plaque and it would make them proud I think so I'm kind of, I want to do it for them more than me actually <laughs> if I'm honest, make my girls proud of me so yeah, if you, if you haven't subscribed please just hit the subscribe button down below, it would be very much appreciated, I would, I would imagine if you're watching up to this point in the video, you are subscribed. But if you haven't subscribed, then please do. Give a like, give a comment, all that it's all good stuff. So yeah, that's it for me. I um, I will see you in the next one. I'm hoping to get another video edited. Uh, sorry, another video recorded this week. So um, we can get a, new, uh, a few videos up. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe. I'm running around the corner from the yard now. You've seen it plenty of times. So I need to show it again. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.